Well, hello and welcome to... Leslie, who is part of the Awakening Giants documentary series that I've been hopping on about for the last couple of weeks because we are due to go live. So many people have been asking me for the last couple of years since we filmed the, the, the very first series of Awakening Giants, when is it going live? When is it going live? And we've heard that they're doing a soft launch in April. So I want to bring to you all of these amazing giants who have literally done giant things around the world and are experiencing the most phenomenal growth and the phenomenal change and certainly at this time in history there's never been a more important time than to have that inspiration and know that whatever you are going through you are not alone whatever you have been through is a, it just it just becomes a great story as we're going to find out from leslie today so leslie welcome 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 change maker thank you for having a bit of a delay again today yes we'll work right through it <laughs> well thank you sammy Write me so let me so leslie you are in the states right now i believe yes i'm in boise idaho Fabulous. Well, tell us a little bit about your journey that led you to the point of saying yes to this crazy suggestion of, hey, why don't you come on to the documentary series? We're going to take you to a, a place that you've maybe never been before. We're going to put you under an insane amount of pressure, and then we're going to film you as you like freak out, have your meltdowns, have your breakthroughs, have your burnouts, you know, nose bubbles, snot bubbles, everything that comes with all of the, right? What on earth made you say yes to going through that process? What led you to that point? What life have you lived for you to say, do you know what? I've got a message the world needs to hear. An awakening giant is one of the ways I can do that. What led you to that moment? It's, it's hard to say that just one thing leads you to that moment. I can honestly tell you that I never thought I was going to be in a TV show, much less a reality TV show. If anything, I was probably someone who would mock them and laugh and feel like they were fake. But the reason I said yes, and when I said yes, I did not know it was a reality TV show. So... <laughs> One of those leaning in and saying yes, and then finding out the details and going, oh, okay, here we go. So the day I said yes, I was with a friend. We were out at Arrow Rock Lake. We were playing in our stand-up jet skis, and you lay on them on your belly, and you give it gas, and then you stand up, and you balance yourself, and you ride. And it can be so much fun. You know, you're just out there in nature, and you're also playing with the power machine at the same time. And my friend had asked to come out because she wanted to learn how to do it as well. And her name is Sammy Tucker. And Sammy is absolutely amazing. If you don't know her, you should check her out. Anyway, Sammy's like, I'm going to do this. And I know Sammy. No. And uh, Sammy's just, if there's a, if she's got a will to do something, she'll do it. So we're out there and we're doing it and we're falling and we're laughing. And we're literally just holding on the jet skis, floating in the water. And Hey, I'm going to New Zealand and you should go with me too. And I'm like, really? I've been wanting to go uh, on, a, on a retreat and I'd never done anything like that. So she was telling me about some of the amazing women that were going and I was like, I'm in. So we, I tell my husband about it and, and uh, I just can really feel it's an all in yes. But the interesting thing is I get the details. Every time I wanted to back out and like say no. Right. But I went through with it. I went to New Zealand. Uh, I spoke on an international stage. I was challenged both in my in my personal development and my development with my sisterhood. And so many things unfolded, including a real connection to not only sisterhood, but to my spiritual mission in life. When I went, I hoped to find the answer to my purpose. When I got back, I realized my purpose is ever evolving and it's not just going to be one thing all the time. So that's the journey I'm on now is living that truth. And that's a really good life. 
Mm. Yeah, but, but you can, I, I had um, I had a really good conversation with a friend of mine. Um, she's one of our Brand Builders Club members, and I was at, the, at an event in London a few days ago with her, and um, and she said to me, you know, like because she'd just literally spoken on stage, and she said, you know, this message I'm sharing on stage. I'm absolutely in love with this message, but I don't know if that's the message that I'm meant to give to the world. And I said, well, does it matter? Because you've just got to keep moving. And, you know, whilst ever you start getting out there, whilst ever you're serving, your purpose will find you anyway. And if you're not on the right track, then the universe will nudge you off and you'll fall over and you'll you'll be sad for a little bit because you'll think that that was what you were meant to be doing and you were trying really hard to still go in that direction but your purpose is just going to keep pulling you. A purpose pulls you. You don't push your way to a purpose. Your purpose and your vision um, pulls you. So, Leslie, with you having done that without expecting that that's what you were going to do, I mean, that's brave in itself. That is massive courage. Tell us a little bit about that purpose that you feel that you're being pulled towards in the world. Well, the purpose is to step into the highest version of myself, the part that I have always had, you know, operating in here and in here and all the ideas that come through that I kind of keep a secret just to myself. You know, we get scared to share them with other people. They sound big and too audacious. And sometimes um, we worry that, you know, our ego or, or ideas are going to bump into someone else or we're not good enough to compete or we're, or we're we just have all these stories that go, and what started happening is realizing that, wow, I have mastered a lot of different topics. I have a lot of different skills. And part of what life has given me is this integration of all these skills that can be used in so many beautiful ways. I get to help yeah. uh, large firms with their nuclear quality assurance program. I help small machine shops meet supply requirements so they can even make parts for an ankle so someone can walk. I get to be on an international stage in India and New Zealand. And at first I thought they were all separate lives. And as I go on this journey, I'm really seeing how one is connected to the other. Truthfully, some of my best leads in, in my consulting business have come from my dirt biking friends or LinkedIn. So what we sometimes do is we castrate or cut off parts of our life from each other and then we don't live our full life. So I'm learning to weave in one piece at a time till I understand how that it is all of me and it's OK to share all of me. And uh, I can actually change the topic or the skill set for the audience that needs me and how I can serve and show up for them. So it's been quite an interesting thing to realize that and start sharing um, spiritual side as well. So I'm not sure if you just asked a question, but I would like to share a little bit more about the spiritual side. I was on a journey with my consulting business and I noticed that I kept having feast or famine and what would happen and I was work really hard and I would get. Yeah. And so let's dig into um, small business because that's the conversation that we really wanted to have tonight. You know, we were thinking, well, what would be the most valuable for those people that are watching? Um, most likely going to be small businesses. There's stuff happening in the world right now that could be, um, you know, isolating you, isolating your business. There are businesses that are going out. Okay. Yes, there's so much going on in the world right now, and it's so easy to be a hermit and retract and go in our shell. But it's actually an invitation for us to look at everything differently. Anywhere and everywhere that we may have been avoiding technology in all its forms, we're being <laughs> we're playing to find to connect in and share with it, just like we're doing today with this podcast. You know, just a few. Hi, Simon. I had never done podcast.
So one of the things I've done is reach out to my network and I'm starting sharing what I do and ways I can serve and show up in the world. And they're also sharing with my audience as well. And one of the things I realized and other entrepreneurs may realize is we have become employees of our business instead of CEOs of our business. So it's time for us to step out of that employee mindset and into the leadership mindset and remember that we need to not only work in our business, but we actually have to work on our business. And when we work on our business, we can actually move out of that slave relationship to our business into the master of creating a business that serves us and serves a much, much larger community. So up until now, I focused on one to two clients at a time, and that was a lovely life. And I was able to really give them undivided attention but I was always a slave to the hours of working for them. And I realized that being a freelancer is not really being fully in my CEO energy. So now I'm challenging myself to build some courses and templates and material so that I can share what I've been doing with one company at a time with many companies at a time. So you'll be seeing more coming out on management systems so you can build the infrastructure and foundation of your company whether you're five people or 500, because I've worked with all types from agriculture to engineering to metal fabrication. And I'm also going to keep that balanced. One of the things I learned as an awakening giant is it's okay to work on our spiritual, mental, and our physical. So I've got the physical pretty covered when it comes to dirt biking and snow biking. We even have a reflexracing.com where we sell our own patented hand guards. But I needed to do more work in the spiritual side. And a lot of us are being asked to connect in. And I had found the Akashic Records calling my name. So since then, I've been studying the Akashic Records. And I found that it's a way of connecting in to your highest self and infinite possibilities. And you can actually use the records to help you make decisions in business and in life. And by connecting in, it helps me stay grounded to my highest purpose and realize that I can truly be the, not only the CEO of my business, but the creator of my most charming life. So I think we lost Sammy for a moment. While she's connecting back in, I just want to say thank you and welcome for tuning in. Um, if you're at home today, hopefully we can put a smile on your face and encourage you to step back into your business, even from home. Or if you're um, not sure what to do, now is a great time to update your bios, uh, maybe even take some new photos. There's a lot of tactical things you can do to actually start you know, building up your brand and building up your connections because this is what's going to get us out of feast or famine is when we regularly and routine continuously to be disciplined in our approach to connecting with our audience and sharing content that is going to serve our audience so if you're interested in more i have a website it's lessieatkinson.com you can find out about my consulting business or you can even sign up for an akashic reading on that same website. It's leslieatkinson.com. Thank you for being with us here today. And we will connect back in as soon as Sammy steps back on the stage. She's back. <laughs> From our little commercial break. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. Well, I knew I was like, right. I was listening to all your story and then it just totally cut out. Um, Leslie, I don't know how much you covered then because obviously I just missed that last piece. And hello, Simon. Uh, Simon, I'm going to put your banner up. 
uh, there. Let's see if that will go up there because, as he says, who are we without our story? And um, and how powerful it is to be able to share that story with the world. Leslie, um, this is Confessions of a Global Changemaker. So what would be your confession of a time that you've been through in your life or your business where you would never, ever, ever, ever do it that way ever again? Like what would, you, what would be your confession if you had one? Uh, mm, there's probably several, but the one that comes to mind is uh, confessing that really working full time as a consultant for one client at a time has not really served me. What I find is that we tend to uh, put to get too involved in building someone else's business to the point that we become like an employee instead of consultant. And so that is a mistake I've repeated several times. And it's something that I want to give a heads up to anyone out there who's doing any kind of freelance or consulting oh. work. It's a trap. And it's a pitfall we often fall into without even trying. Uh, we're giving our best, but it's actually not in the highest service for that client or for ourselves. So just having one, you know, one client or working more than 30 hours a week uh, on a regular basis with one client is definitely something I confess that is not in the highest good of all. So to change that, you actually have to change your model. You have to actually build something else other than things that you can do per hour. And that's the challenge for a lot of us. We don't know. We think our work is so custom. How can I do that? And it's about getting creative and finding out what the needs are. And sometimes it's actually creating something and putting it out there and getting a response to it and finding out from that. What I see more times than not is once we create something, it leads to the next thing. So often the first creation may not be 100% on point, but it allows us to iterate and pivot and move into that higher purpose or that more profitable product that our, that our ideal clients are begging for. Because when we show up, then they can start asking us questions and that questions brings awareness to us of not only what skill we have that we can share, but what next content we can create for them. Brilliant answer. And I'm a big fan of that form of working because too many people are trying to create products and services based on what they know rather than what their ideal customer actually wants. And you're still going to know the answer to it. But, you know, stop creating based on reactionary creation. And I think that's actually a state that I'm seeing a lot of people get into right now with coronavirus is they're all going into this action of how can I create an online business? But then they're not focusing on are you actually creating the right thing for the right people at this time? It might be that what you had in mind to create isn't the thing that you need to launch right now. And that's one of the reasons we're look, we're running our um, Brand Builders Club members weekend this weekend is focused just on product and how do you know that you're creating the right thing for the right time in the right way. So um, it's very important. I love what you just said there, Leslie. Now, Leslie, what are you seeing is a big mistake that your clients are making? What are they doing um, in a reactionary way that's actually harming their business rather than moving it forward? One of the biggest things that harms businesses is they actually don't communicate internally well. They tend to create a storm inside their business and they're so busy producing the product and maybe even complaining about some of the results or lack of results with each other. And they don't take the time to actually hear the employee's input or the customer's feedback. It'll be right there in a, in a survey or right there in the metrics of their delivery time. And yeah. then they don't focus on real simple solutions like delivering on time, you know, reducing the defects. I have a lot of product based customers versus service. Right. So we lose sight of real basic things that matter to people. And what matters to people is that you can be counted on, that you're reliable whether it's reliable and timeliness, quality, quality, or, you know, consistent in cost because they're building their business model off you as a supplier. So one of the things that I'm encouraging my clients to do 
is really open the lines of communications with their supplier chain, with their business partners, and actually open their ears to what their employees have to say. So often we don't really hear what they're trying to tell us, and they often have the solutions to our biggest problems. Very true. I think if everybody operated from that position, you know, even as an online business, even if you've failed and you've created an exponential business where you could have millions of customers, like um, a, a telephone company or a, a utilities supplier, they've got millions of customers and not all of those customers are happy necessarily. But there are some companies that are doing it really well. And it's about modeling what they're doing well. And the thing that they're doing well is usually their customer service. So I think that's a great point, Leslie, for everybody to focus on. Like, you know, what is your customer service strategy right now? Because now is a time that, you know, you're going to be out for your customers or you're just going to be in the sea of sameness with everyone else. So how are you reacting and responding to the feedback that you're getting? Are you even listening to the feedback? Are you even asking the feedback? And if so, how? How are you doing that? Because sending a simple survey through SurveyMonkey, for example, might be a good way of doing that or maybe just pick up the phone or reach out to people and find out how they're getting on. A simple chat can lead to so many other conversations. Uh, Leslie, what would be your, um, like your top tip for those customers that are doing that, that aren't doing it right and they could be focusing on some different things? What would be your number one strategy doing that a lot of what you just said I, I find it's as simple often is picking up the phone right and that's something we have and a lot of us have time and opportunity to do now is pick up a couple you know pick a few customers on the list pick a few suppliers on the list call them and ask them what are your needs and how can I serve you because you may be pleasantly surprised they're still in business as well hello they still want to do business and maybe you can actually adjust how how you're working together to suit both needs so I think that we're getting an opportunity to communicate and to reconnect so we can collaborate more strategically and more efficiently than we did before so it's time to take a pause and actually talk Yeah, 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 to all of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Leslie, tell us about, let's go back to the Awakening Giants documentary for a little bit. Um, I want to know what was the most challenging thing that they had you do? Where I, and I, it could be New Zealand, it could be India, because you were filming yeah. in both locations. Um, in fact, tell us about your most challenging time from each of those, because I know they, they do different things on each location. Absolutely. Well, what were you faced with? We were all faced with opportunities for adventure, but I <laughs> soaked those up. That's easy for me. And we were uh, uh, many opportunities to do service work and, you know, get our hands dirty. Love that. But the opportunity to hang out with 15 women while being filmed was my challenge. <laughs> 15 women with emotions and ideas yeah. and beliefs of what should be on TV, what shouldn't, what we should talk about, how we should say it, what we should look like. That was quite an adventure for me. That was pushing me to my edge. I'm not a gal who wakes up and wants my makeup on or wants to be filmed uh, when I'm brushing. Wow. <laughs> not me. <laughs> so there were several times I walked off camera. It just, that part wasn't for me. And it wasn't because it wasn't real. It was because sometimes it would feel fake. And I didn't like that feeling. <laughs> sometimes in life, we overscript what we want to say. And that's when it didn't feel authentic and real. And so I was really excited that most of the people were being real. Um, truthfully, is even when you're scripting it, you're being real. I had to learn that. I had to learn that some people had polished their message better than I had. And that maybe there was things going on inside of me and that I was the one that was wrong because maybe I was judging them for the for the preparation they had done when really I should be 
just moving myself forward and how could I stand up more? So it was a real edge. It challenged me at several times. Several women were so gracious and actually sat with me and talked with me about it and helped me see um, my own strengths and weaknesses in the process and helped me see why I was on the TV show. And that was a big part of it. And I hope that the world can see that um, that in a positive way, that it would be hard for them to be on camera sometimes as well and to, you know, not feel a little bit invaded, but also realize that's part of our edge sometimes is to learn where our boundaries are and what we're comfortable with. Definitely. Well, what's next for you, Leslie? What What is this leading you to? Well, I had no idea I'd get invited to India. And so that was the next surprise. And that trip was fabulous. I just learned so much about kindness in a way that I can't explain, but I am doing everything I can to live what I learned there. And I see that growing and evolving. And uh, I've seen other giants even bring the kindness message back as well, because it is one of the most hospitable countries I've ever been to. And the people and their history and their love, it just penetrates, it like penetrates your soul. So where I'm leading that to is to sharing about more of my story. I didn't understand the value of that and how other people could connect with it. And I am uh, challenging myself to do new things like start uh, journaling more of it. I've got a nice thick journal after, after I started my journey of Awakening Giants. And Keep leaning in. Um, just wondering what's next. I know I'll get invited. <laughs> Brilliant. It's a fabulous journey that we're all on, and we're all on this together. You know, if if you watching this now. Um, are thinking if you're that you're challenged with something I mean there are plenty of challenges being thrown at each and every person on the planet uh, as there always are and uh, right now there is some stuff going on that could be sending you into a spin doing exactly what what Leslie just said you know how are you leaning into it or are you trying to ignore it are you pretending it's not there? Are you uh, looking at these challenges and saying, I see you, I see you, and here's how this is going to go? Um, are you positively uh, moving through it and forgetting about any fear? Are, are fears coming up for you? Because I think it's important to recognize what are your feelings, what are your emotions as you <clears throat> attempt any kind of challenge, as you come face to face with some of those biggest things that have been lurking in the background, it can bring stuff up. It absolutely can bring stuff up. And so, um, Leslie, when you get to a place of fear or when you're, I mean, you do some pretty extreme stuff. So maybe I'm asking the wrong person right now, but there must have been a time in your life where you were faced with a fear or something came up for you, not just walking off set, but something really came up for you. Like what's your strategy for overcoming fear? Well, first, my confession is, is even though I'm adventurous and I may jump out of planes and race dirt bikes, I still have fear because I am human. So I wake up and put my pants on one leg at a time, just like everyone else. And I have a lot more what I call internal fears versus external fears. So, you know, physical nature, those are kind of external and internal is the expectations I have inside of my head. And so the biggest challenge I've had is to um, get a handle on this expectation in my mind that I need to achieve a certain thing. You know, I needed to achieve a certain, you know, write a book, be on a stage, do these things and start letting that go. And being a strategy person for business, I've actually, my trick is to stop strategizing yeah. the fear, <laughs> is stop trying to control it and actually let it flow through and actually step yeah. back and try to observe it flowing through and go, wow, isn't that interesting? And suddenly realizing it was going on all the time that Miss Fearless Leslie was quite fearful in so many small ways that maybe the rest of the world couldn't see or know. 
And that's the true story I share with my clients and with my friends when I'm working with them is I'm just as fearful as you are. It just looks different and it might feel different, but it still makes me self-sabotage my life, block off potential business clients. It does all those things. So one of the ways that I was able to switch that conversation that was going on in my head is to daily journal is when I actually sit and journal a little bit, I can see the energy of anger, fear and frustration lighten up. And then it kind of transforms into something that's like airy fairy and peaceful and loving. And at first I would laugh at it and I would think, oh gosh, this is kind of silly or fake, or I don't want people to know I think that's sweet. <laughs> but the truth is the little girl inside <laughs> Yeah, the little girl inside of me is just waiting for people to see and know how sentimental I am, how many times a day I think about them and send them love bombs and how many times I just want to write a, a piece of poetry to make them smile. And that that's what I'm seeing oh. by watching the wave. And I'm actually choosing to hang out um, with other with friends and go to festivals and to concerts and take belly dancing in addition to dirt biking. So I realized I didn't have to give up my adventurous side. I just had to make room right. for some of those other right. flowing energies come in. So I definitely have been in a dance the last two years of going straight from, from a very strong, pure masculine force to not full feminine but allowing them to sway and dance together and not making either one wrong or right and realizing that the feminine can show up dirt biking. It can show up in nuclear quality assurance. It can show up in a machine shop and the world is hungry for it. But it didn't mean I left and checked my masculine at the door either. I can still be an expert and authoritative and use my strategic skills. And the minute that I started actually having them dance together, I just felt 20 pounds lighter, right? Like, and I went from blocking off opportunities to saying yes to opportunities because they felt good and knowing how to say no to ones that did feel so good. They felt required or expected. So I really pay attention to that more. And the journaling is my kind of my, my way. Um, I can get lost in it. I, I, I do go very romantic, <laughs> but I like that I invited all of me to play together finally. I love that. That is beautiful. And for those of you that are watching either live or you're you're tuning in via the replay, what a great message to to take home as we wrap up today's interview is to be yourself and bring all of yourself to the table. You know, I, I meet a lot of people and get a lot of questions about who do I show up as on social media? Do I have my own profile? Do I need to create a business profile? Do I need to have a separate profile so that that can be about business and I can show up for my friends on this one and then my business, it's like the world is watching you no matter <laughs> where you are, they're watching who you are. And it doesn't matter what profile you're putting it on, the world expects you to bring it all together. I mean, that's a freaking lot of energy that you put into having this schizophrenic life of <laughs> I'm only going to let you see this bit and I'm going to let you see this bit. You know, the internet is categorizing everything that you share anyway. So if someone types in your name, it's still going to show up. Even if you've got a closed profile, there are ways of being able to see it. So just show up in your authentic self. Bring your whole self to the table. It's a lot less work and a lot less energy, wouldn't you say, Leslie? Absolutely. I was that person you're describing. I still am at times. And I just it's just like a freak out mode. It's all the rules, all the rules. And to say the Akashic, I read the Akashic records and I consult the <laughs> nuclear in the same sentence terrified me, terrified me. I was afraid that people would find out. And so I practiced one little step at a time. First, I put them on a website on the same domain. <laughs> they may not be blended perfectly. I had to put it out there. I had to. 
experience that, you know, the world wasn't going to end and people weren't going to hate me. And then I actually said both phrases in a podcast like I've done today. Oh my gosh. Some friends called me on it and I laughed and I said, but don't you know, I'm that dynamic. And they're like, of course. Right. So the more I owned it, the more my audience and circle owned it because they knew it was really me. They were waiting for all of me to show up. And I had to accept the truth that anyone that it turned away really wasn't going to like consulting or dirt biking with me because I was always showing up in person as all of that. I wasn't doing it online. And that that um, inco incoherence was actually causing me more stress. No one else, no one else cared how bad it made me feel, but it was a life changer to start doing it. I still have a long way to go. I'm sure some way I'll finally blend it all together. But the, the, the goal was to put a piece out there at a time so I could accept it and find out that there were plenty of other people in the world not only accepting it, begging for it. Right. Yeah. Quote literally is begging for you to show as is amazing how that you are. So that, it, you know, your ideal customers are really, they're searching right now. They're in pain. They're searching for you. And, you know, you've got this amazing solution. You've got this amazing and already solving problems for the people who already know that you exist. But all those people who know you exist, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're in the darkness right now. And you're the, we've got to drive them towards that light. But again, it's about pulling them like it's about attracting them it's about you being so freaking bright that they can't see anything or anyone else like they're just guiding towards you and when they find you and you're showing up as your whole self and if spirituality is a massive part you kind of owe it to business to bring that into it instead of keeping it and hiding it but there's a way of doing that as leslie has, uh, has said just then there's a way of um bringing both sides of, of that to your brand i have a lot of brand builders club members i know judith quinn she's one of our brand builders she's been a member now for three years she was one of the founding members when we launched in 2017 and judith came to stay at my house in france and we spent like oh, wow. two full days just looking at how, how could she, she was really worried because she had this side to her business where she was working with corporates and professionals, but then she had this other side to her business, which she refers to as woo woo, you know, where she was sound <laughs> healing. She was doing voice meditation work. She was doing all of these other things, which were totally different to the corporate side. And it was like, you know, how do I bring those things together? And, and ended up branding her your voice because ultimately if someone's in pain they really don't care whether you use tarot cards a strategy um you know a blueprint a system uh, a program they don't they don't care they don't care what you pull out of the table if you're sounding into their belly if that's going to solve this problem do whatever you can and it, you just owe it to yourself to bring your whole self and you owe it to your business and your customers and let's face it if somebody isn't really interested in that side of you, then maybe they're not your customer anyway. Maybe they're not your tribe. Maybe that's a question for you to think about. Obviously that is for all of you watching this call right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie, is there anything that you would like to wrap up with? Do you wanna share with us? Do you have a website? Is there some way that um, our viewers can tune in and and uh, connect with you. Could you share that with us? And I'll put it as a banner across the bottom of the screen. Absolutely. It's all very simple. My website is leslieatkinson.com. You can find me on Facebook under Leslie Atkinson Stanger. And in both places, I have links to my Facebook groups and all the activities that are going on. One of the most exciting things you'll see is I have a Facebook group called Universal and Universal means one song for all. And it's it's just a place where you can share any kind of harmony, sound healing, mostly music, um, anything that lifts your day. And so each morning, if I get a song pop in my head, I go on there and I post it 
and you're able to play the song, be inspired by with it, share a memory of when you first heard the song or what it brings back for you and maybe share your favorite song in the group. And you'll see that it's just a nice, lovely place to use sound of music to lift you up. Wow. Well, it sounds like Judith should be in that group. <laughs> Just to pulled her out of thin air for as this conversation, and it turns out that actually she needs to be a part of that. So I'll uh, I'll see what I can do to connect you, Leslie. Yeah. Thank you so so much for for showing up, for shining your light, for being the lighthouse for us all today. Uh, we've had a few little delays on the communication, and we have some internet gremlins. So thank you to those of you that have bared with us and you've stuck with it um, for the for the journey. Um, I will be editing all of those bits out. So, uh, so that when you share this, Leslie, uh, you'll have one complete interview. Um, guys and girls, have an amazing, amazing evening. It's, is it Tuesday today? I can't even think what day it is. Like, <laughs> everything's kind of all merging into one right now. Uh, but um, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful evening. And we will be live again at five tomorrow. Who have we got in the hot seat tomorrow? We've got the one and only David Shepherd, who is an incredible mindset specialist like he is a guru where it comes to mind and performance and how we think and how we feel and how we show up in the world so what question would you ask an expert on mindset and behaviors and values and beliefs if you had a question what would it be? Please send it in to me. Drop me a message so that I can ask David for you tomorrow and uh, and obviously be here live if you can so you can ask him yourself. So uh, take care. Thank you again, Leslie, and um, have a wonderful evening and I will see you all in the group. Mwah. <laughs>